Do your plants look like this? If they do, you might want to give this video a shot. Hello Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? My name is Ashley. I'm a soil scientist with formal education with a minor in plant science and on this channel we take the science and we apply it to tips, tricks, wise trails, and we even give you some new theories on gardening and plant care. And on today's video, we are talking about the art of hardening off your plants and the science behind it as well. In this video, we are going over what mechanisms happen when we harden off our plants properly, how to properly harden off our plants, and exactly how long you should take to harden your plants off. So why do we harden off plants? And it comes down simply to we need to change the structure of the plant cells. We need to give it new gear to adapt to the world outside. Of course, we get into the science of this in this video. When we talk about hardening off, we are talking about the upper portions of the plant, the stems and the leaves, and in some cases, the flowers. When we're hardening off plants, we're taking three things into the factor the sun, the wind, and the temperature. With the sun, the wind, and the temperature, we have the leaves and the stem, and these two things factor in hugely to how our plant adapts and how well it does when it gets into the outside world from the greenhouse to home. We're gonna look at a plant cell leaf because this is where it starts. When we look at the plant cell leaf, we can see the cuticle, the epidermis, the daxial, and the a baxial, which is the front and the back, and also the mesophyll, which is the inside of the leaf, which is where all our photosynthesis takes place. So the first thing that happens when we harden off our plants is we, number one, when we harden off our plants, what we're doing is we're either thickening or thinning our cuticle layer of our epidermis on our leaf. That is this waxy substance and in some cases you can actually pull the cuticle off of a leaf. I know we've done it as kids and that is what you did is you pulled the cuticle off. The cuticle helps regulate things like temperature and moisture loss. On this epidermis there is something called guard cells. These guard cells help regulate an organ called a stomata. When these stomatas open and close, a gas exchange happens. The gas exchange that happens inside the greenhouse is different than the gas exchange that happens outside. The reason being is that moisture is lost through the stomata. So if you take a plant and you take it from a greenhouse where it is warm and nice and you immediately place it outside where it is windy and hot, what ends up happening is our stomatas snapshot our guard cells snapshot and photosynthesis no longer takes place that is why you have things like wilting or sunburn if we allow the plant to regulate itself and figure out its new pace by properly hardening them off we limit the stress on the epidermis and the guard cells themselves the number two thing that happens when we properly harden off a plant is we change the way the light reflects off the plant interestingly enough so there's three ways that we can change the way the light refracts off the plant and how much is absorbed into the plant leaf for photosynthesis we change the color of the leaf we change the actual ridges of the leaf so it, you may notice it gets a little bit more bumpy or tough looking and thirdly is Thirdly is the hairs on the leaf. So you might notice, for example, Gerber daisies, their leaves are very fuzzy. This fuzzy leaf in some cases is used to deter bugs, but in other cases is actually used to refract the light away because they don't want to get too much light and burn their mesophyll, the inside of the leaf, which then limits the amount of photosynthesis that can take place. These hairs are called trichome. If you are ever interested in looking them up, they're actually the same hairs that are on tomato plants. And they're actually the hairs that give tomato plants their smell, oddly enough. Number three is the thickening of the stems. When the wind is blowing the stem around, the plant cells are sending a single signal to the stem to thicken up or multiply faster. So when our plant multiplies faster, in some cases like tomatoes, you may start to notice towards the end of the year, it kind of gets like a bark on the outside. That bark is caused by the wind stress. So 
this will signal to your plants that it's time to change things up and build up that stem and make it stronger so that when it is put outside, it is able to take wind gusts to a degree. And fourthly, and probably the most important one, and the reason why you're seeing floppy plants is because you need to alter the osmosis, the diffusion, and just the general movement of nutrients and water through the plant itself. When our plant is exposed to varying levels of wind, sun, and heat, or cold, it is able to alter its cells, how its xylem and its phloem work, all the way to how the osmosis and the speed of which osmosis takes place within the cell. So because we want the plant to react differently, send out the proper hormones and the proper signals to the rest of the plant to alter the gas exchange and the nutrient flow, we need to give it time to do so. The way I like to look at plant hardening is something similar to if you took me, for example, a Canadian in zone three and you shipped me to Mexico in the middle of December. What would end up happening is if you could change me from minus 30 to plus 30 in less than 30 seconds, I'd be sweating, I'd be sunburned, and I'd be very sick. But if you gave me the option of flying on a plane and then getting off the plane and then into an air conditioned airport and then air conditioned resort, so on and so forth, I'd slowly be able to adapt. I'd slowly be able to drink more water, maybe change my clothing, build up a base tan, things like that. The same thing is taking place when it comes to plants. So we want to give it the ability to slowly change what it's doing. Think of it as a Canadian on a flight to Mexico. What would you need to do to make sure you can keep that person alive? So how do we do it? Well, hardening off is actually very simple. So what you're going to do a week before you plant. So if it is Monday and you're planning to put your plants outside on a Saturday, what you do is you actually take your plants out of your greenhouse and you're going to bring them outside. Now you're not just gonna throw them outside wherever you want. You're going to put them in a shaded area that is out of the wind. So the first day is in a shaded area out of the wind. At nighttime, you're going to bring them back into your greenhouse, especially if it's getting cold outside. If it is not getting cold at night for you, you can leave them outside in the spot that you had them before. Then the next day, you're going to repeat the same process, a sheltered area that is shaded third day, you can move them to a shaded area that is exposed to more airflow or more wind. This is going to give it a better chance to adjust its guard cells and its stomata to the water loss that comes with air movement and wind movement. Then the fourth day, you can move them from full shade to part shade and wind exposure. As you do this, we are now allowing the plant to figure out how to regulate wind, sunshine, and the addition of heat or temperature changes. For the last day of hardening off, you would leave the plant in that part sun, full wind exposure, exposure to the element, elements for the rest of the week until it's time to transplant into full sun. If you have a plant that is more sensitive, you may want to consider taking more time with this, but that is the general premise for what you need to do. And this goes for all plants. It doesn't matter if it's a cactus, a tomato, or a tree. You want to harden off your plant. It is going to save you a ton of money. It is going to give you bigger yields and it is going to save your plant's life. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. I don't want to move you <laughs> I literally have you balancing on a thing, but there's a woodpecker behind me and it's going to start hammering away so I might have to stop talking for a bit. It's like a little baby too. Oh, he's looking for bugs. Okay, if he starts hammering away I might need to stop but I don't want to interrupt him. Oh hey there, are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome plant videos.